I'm David Howardson and I'm the composer for Thomas Was Alone. I got started working in games um, actually whilst I was on tour uh, with my band. We went on tour with um, another band from Essex and uh, their lead guitarist was um, a designer at Jagex, uh, which is a game studio who made RuneScape, um, Transformers MMO and uh, I basically sort of sucked up to him all week and uh, ended up managing to get some um, work experience. He left them and joined a startup called Bosses Studios and um, he said that uh, the lead designer there was working on his own um, uh, independent project. It was a hobby project and uh, he was looking for a composer to do music for him um, but he didn't have any money to spend so I just graduated from university I was looking for my first game. Um, so I wrote a demo um, for this guy. Um, he turned out to be Mike um, and that demo turned out to be the title track for Thomas Was Alone, so uh, that's uh, pretty much peaked right at the beginning to be honest, but <laughs> so uh, that's how it began and then it snowballed from there. The biggest influence is easily uh, Iron Audi. Um, the themes of the game were um, uh, loneliness, isolation, um, finding yourself and I just, um, I think his music perfectly sums it up as it is, particularly his work in uh, the This Is England series. Other than that, my biggest influence was probably a post-rock band called Explosions in the Sky, who did the soundtrack for a film called Friday Night Lights, um, which is set in West Texas, um, and it's just the most desolate place you can imagine, so it was the perfect um, backdrop. So I took a lot from that and um, tried to sort of create this uh, lonely environment for the game, um, which somehow has, seems to have worked, so yeah. The best advice I could give would be to, um, it's so cliche, but to work on your portfolio. The portfolio is the most important thing. It's so difficult to get experience um, in the industry without a proven track record, but the one thing that you can do is show people what you're capable of with your online showreel. If you talk to enough people and you have personal skills, then someone, if your music's good enough, someone's going to give you a chance. So work hard while there's no pressure on and you can literally spend as long as you want making the best music that you're possibly capable of and then showcase it anywhere and everywhere and show it to everyone and anyone and someone's going to listen to it. I got involved with Thomas um, relatively early on to be honest. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, the, w the way it originated it was actually a flash game made in 24 hours. It was Game Jam Challenge and um, Mike sort of threw this uh, thing together. It didn't have any sound or music, but it got a good sort of um, reception on Congregate. So it inspired him to, you know, turn it into something else and see where it could go. So I pretty much got involved directly at the beginning of um, that, but the game did exist in a sort of, you know, lesser form, if you will, uh, beforehand. Um, so it's fantastic. I had literally like a year, yeah, no, an entire year to work on that game. So, um, and I'm convinced that's the only reason that we got the results where we did because I could write a couple of tracks a month and then have a break and then come back to it with a renewed perspective and inspiration. Whereas if I'd have been forced to write, um, you know, 10 or 12 songs in the space of, I don't know, eight weeks or something, the you know, it's not, it wouldn't have been the same. It wouldn't have been the same. So it was really nice having that um, length of time to really go to town and experiment with things. And if you play the game and you listen to the soundtrack, you, you know, you'll hear the progression in my <laughs> ability and experience as a composer as it goes on. The later tracks are far superior to the beginning tracks and so on and so forth. So you almost see a timeline of uh, my composing over the course of a year. The audio system in the game is the most complex thing I've ever worked with and hopefully ever will work with again. Um, it was roughly based on a system that um, Jason Graves used for the Dead Space games um, uh, where it's sort of um, a layered approach. So you, you have a bass track uh, which runs the entire time and then uh, depending on the uh, intensity of the action other layers uh, get drawn in until you've got sort of like full-blown um, orchestra and samples and everything. Um, we took that one step further um, instead of having um, d different uh, layers of music which go over the top we literally broke down every single instrument and chopped, uh, chopped each instrument into uh, bars of um, 8 and 16 and then it was thrown into the system and randomly generated so any one part of the song, any one instrument could potentially be played with any other instrument at any given time. And that's a dreadful way of describing it but it essentially means that you can play that game a hundred times and you'll hear a different piece of music every single time you play it and I don't think there's many people which have experimented with that so it's a unique experience for sure.
I think the thing about the game is it's a marriage of three things. It's the um, it's the narrative, it's uh, Danny's deliverance of Mike's narrative, and it's the music supporting that narrative. And you've got all of those three elements combining together to create this one experience, which um, you know it's no coincidence. People are saying they've felt more empathy for these 2D squares than they did for a lot of the AAA uh, lead protagonists. Um, it's just some. It's been this beautiful marriage, and it's all worked. And if you take any one of those elements away, the other two would cease to be as important as they are. So everything is, um, you know, equally supportive and equally imp important. And um, somehow it's just come together and worked. Uh, I'd like to say it was planned that way, but <laughs> we're just happy it's it's uh, gone the way it has. So yeah.